At $450, the PS4 Pro is not a cheap console. In fact, it's the most expensive one out on the market right now. And Xbox's Project Scorpio probably won't be any cheaper when it comes out later this year. So it has me wondering, what can we get out of a PC in 2017 for about the same cost as a PS4 Pro? So our budget is around the $450 mark, and you'll notice with the PC that I put together, some days it's below the budget, some days it's above the budget, but it is right around that $450 range. And we'll give you a good idea of sort of how the consoles stack up in comparison to their price equivalent PC. Let's go. Okay, so hopping into this build overview, first of all, I put this together yesterday and the price tag was about $50 cheaper uh, because of expired rebates and price fluctuation on things like the hard drive, for example, went up by about $7. Um, in the interim time there. So the, this this price point of four sixty nine and one cent with um, the ten, the ten dollar mail in rebate, it is always possible that that will go up, down, or um, side to side. Um, certain parts may get more expensive while others others get a little bit cheaper. So it's around a four hundred and fifty dollar computer, um, and right now it just happens to come in a little bit more than that. Though in the future you may be able to find some of these parts on sale elsewhere and make it a little bit cheaper. So with that disclaimer out of the way, I want to hop right into the parts list here. And the brains of the operation is the Intel G4620. It's a KB Lake Pentium. And the reason I went with this Pentium processor, which may be a little bit of a surprising pick if you haven't been keeping up on the Pentiums lately, is simply that it's a hyper-threaded Pentium, which means it has two cores and four threads, much like Intel's i3 line. And that is the driving force behind me picking this processor. Um, the four threads will give it good gaming performance. Sure, it won't be as good as the i3s, which will be at a higher clock speed, or even the i5s, which have four th true cores. But these four threads will give you good gaming performance, especially when you consider the price tag of just $93. I paired the G4620 with an ASRock board. Now, if you follow me on social media or you um, read my comments, sometimes I'm not a huge fan of ASRock boards, but at the price point of $60, I'd be more than willing to give them another shot. And the reason I like this board is it does give you six SATA ports. And the other big thing that I really appreciate about the board is that it gives you two PCIe by one slots. Normally in a micro ATX board like this, the graphics card will cover one of those up if you're running a normal double width graphics card, which we will be. So having that second PCIe by one port or slot rather will give us the ability to add in Wi-Fi after the fact. And that is um, a super nice feature to have on a board. Next for RAM, I went with a one stick solution. And the reason for that is if we pop back over here to our motherboard, you'll notice we only have two DIMMs to work with. So by going with a one stick of eight gigabyte RAM, we leave open that other slot, which leaves open the upgrade path to 16 gigabytes down the road. I went with the G-Skill Aegis um, eight gig stick running at 2133 megahertz. Comes in at $53 on Newegg right now. And I was really just looking for the cheapest reputable solution that I could find. And that's basically how I landed on this particular stick. For storage, and I already mentioned this hard drive was $7 cheaper yesterday, so you may want to swap out this part for either a 7200 RPM part or maybe even a um, two terabyte hard drive, which typically doesn't run much more expensive. But this is a one terabyte uh, Western Digital hard drive running at 5400 RPMs and 64 megabytes of cache. Um, I just did a video actually on how it doesn't really matter that much once you're in game, at least as pertains to frame rates. So if you want to check that video out, I'll put a card in the uh, video around this point. But we're not going with an SSD here because I want mass storage. If you want, because of the case and the motherboard we picked, you can always upgrade and have a boot SSD later on down the road. But to get the system up and running, this is the most cost effective solution that gives you plenty of room for your games. Now for the most important part of any sort of gaming PC is the graphics card and I went with the uh, ASUS ROG RX 470 
reason I did this was, A, it was $30 cheaper yesterday when I put it in the cart. Um, so if you can find these 470s for a little bit cheaper, a different variant maybe with a discount, that may be the way to go. But I picked the 470 over the 1050 Ti for this build, mostly because it will beat the 1050 Ti in any benchmarks that I've seen. It just seems to be an all-around stronger card. And yes, it does typically run a little bit more expensive, but in this case, the gap between it and the 1050 Ti, I believe, is worth the extra uh $20 or so, depending on which variants of the 1050 Ti you're getting. So this one, it, it looks good. It's it's all black shroud, so it'll fit in any build aesthetic. It won't clash with things. Should be a good cooling solution. And just all around a solid card I, that I don't really see any issues with picking up. The case at this price point is always sort of difficult to figure out. I went with the SRM01 from Rosewill, and I did that because the nondescript looks of it. It's just a black chassis. It's even painted interior, which is extremely nice for um, anybody that's ever worked with these sort of lower end chassis that don't always have painted interiors. So it will look nice both inside and out. Um, there's really not much else to say about it. It'll fit the components. It gives you the expandability to add a disc drive. If you're building this for a home theater setup, maybe you'll want to add a Blu-ray drive down the road and does give you plenty of hard drive upgrade ability. Um, the cable management in this case isn't going to be great. However, you will also notice on the, on the right side panel, it is sort of, um, a, a pushed out design where, where the side panel is pressed out to give you a little bit of cable management room. So it's not completely useless in cable management behind the motherboard tray, but it still will be a tight fit for most cables. And finally going with a uh, power supply, I went with basically the cheapest reputable power supply I could find. And that is this 80 plus uh, certified EVGA unit, 400 watts for $30 from Amazon. It gives us all the uh, connectors we need. It actually gives us two PCIe connectors. It gives us a six pin and an eight pin there. It has a four plus four pin EPS. And of course the 24 pin motherboard connector alongside I believe four SATA connectors to give you plenty of hard drive, um, SSD and disk drive expandability, as well as giving you some Molex connectors, which you can then, um, you, you could adapt if you really needed to, to give you even more expandability. So that's our build. It is right now, like I said, coming in at about $470, just slightly more expensive than a PS4 Pro, which comes in at uh, $450 right now. And of course, if you want to add the operating system cost, that'll be about $5. I actually did a video on that as well, finding cheap OS keys through eBay. You can check that video out in the card linked here. And that pretty much concludes our build. If you want to, if you would like to see a build like this actually put together and tested, let me know in the comments. I don't know how feasible it is right now for me to do something like that, but that's definitely something we could look at down the road. As always, guys, if you like this content, give me a like down below, share, subscribe, all those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, at Hoosier Hardware. And finally, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you guys to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.